So we need to re-engine the Tibet for a big change. We covered a great variety of topics uh, which reflected the priorities that uh, our uh, regional and local uh, authorities identified. Uh, in the region and in fact major stakeholder when it comes to vocational education and training and uh, they are in contact, uh, direct contact with educational institution, business environment and most notably the citizens. First, you need to understand uh, your regional and institutional context. So trying to think, you know, bringing like credit politics uh, stakeholders together, trying to think what will be the skills of tomorrow? What do we need to prepare uh, and assess uh, the, the skill set that we will need in uh, 10, 15 years uh, and prepare for it, you know? Setting goal and finding a way and persevering, we managed to create a regional ecosystem that uh, is uh, built now on fast, Skateboard is the innovation uh, because innovation helps us to speed up the whole process. So I think a lot in an innovation ecosystem is about upskilling people with existing skills. Uh, most regions have vocational training schools. This is maybe the, the easiest to impact. So try to see whether you have any educational tools in your own hands as a region that you can change faster. Uh, and then uh, work with the business sector. Uh. How we can encourage young people and support them, keeping them interested in learning in a global context that is very different from the one before the pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, low-skilled uh, young people, uh, they are more likely to be cramped in low wages uh, jobs, but also to not enjoying the same uh, quality of uh, life. So you may imagine in our current world with these uh, so um, demanding uh, jobs and skills and, and, and changing environments and labor markets, somebody uh, who is not qualified in upper secondary education, how can he really find his way in life and labor markets? It's, it's uh, undoubtable that uh, digital learning formats, they do have limits, of course, and they, these limits are huge for those who are at risk, for those who uh, cannot be connected as easily as we connect it today. There is no digital inclusion without social inclusion. That each intervention, each policy should be tailor-made. So if you want to support learners at risk or early school leavers, you should really design your policies according to their needs. In order to help young people to thrive and prevent early leaving from education and training in schools, Policies, public policies and practices aimed at boosting self-confidence, therefore, are crucial. It's about the opportunities and success pathways offered by vocational education and training, which need to become more visible, and the self-esteem and confidence of young people in vocational education and training, which needs to be supported and developed. Youth should be in the center. It means that they need an integral treatment, and we have to coordinate social services, health services, community services, and all in a one-stop shop. As you know, it's, it's, uh, it's relevant for most of the public policies, but in our case, it's fundamental. Vocational training is the capacity to uh, permit to these target the achievement of skills and to support their work reinsertion. The design of the provision of tailored opportunities and the follow and following individualized approaches seems to be an effective leverage for positive impact training. We are talking about today the only skill that will be important in the 21st century is the skill of learning new skills. Everything else will become obsolete over time. Women have a major uh, uh, role to play in providing the skills Europe will need in the future. As my partner keeps telling me, where women have competed in technical roles, they have often uh, proved more efficient and dedicated than their male equivalents. It's very important when it comes to having role models and not, you know, um, not one kind of role models. We need to really have people from different backgrounds, different minorities, so that children can internalize from uh, the earliest age that they are able uh, to achieve their dreams and their... Because you need activating pedagogies in order to learn certain skills and attitudes. You cannot just sit passively in the classroom. 
A student-centered learning environment is one where the focus of instruction is shifted from the teacher to the student with a specific end goal, meaning to support students to become autonomous and independent. The students are active participants in their learning. Uh, they have taken ownership of their learning. They have autonomy, they have competence, and they have uh, uh, power. Uh, to shape their learning path. Sometimes we just think that uh, when we teach a lot, then students learn a lot. It's not uh, true. According to me, when we teach less, students learn more. Student so the DET courses could also similarly be designed in a way that not only ensures workplace training, but also links the works that learners do with their local surroundings. It creates an understanding and a commitment from the side of learners to develop the civic competencies if they're part of the society in this way. Uh, CSOs should be part of the development of the curriculum. It's, uh, it's because the, the end goal for any type of education is to ensure also the personal development of the learner and to prepare them to be active members in society. Reskilling and retraining is a cross-cutting issue, a transversal uh, to many of our areas of work and especially it must be the heart of our climate action. We have to look at uh, the job-specific skills that are related to environmental sustainability, but we have also to include uh, uh, the a new attitude, new behavior that will affect us as a citizens. And the workers are also citizens. System will need to develop tools and resources, including tools such as youth guarantee, individual learning account. Digital technology will be able to support personalized, adaptive and flexible learning processes and pathways. And we see that we are all uh, identifying um, a more hands-on approach to skills development as one of the key plans for future policies. We, are, we have now come up with a global codes model. So in case you don't know codes, they are the centers of vocational excellence. What we have done with this model that we are proposing is to look at international networking and collaboration. And the work that needs to be done going forward include accessibility and inclusivity because not everybody has the same ability and opportunity. The centers are crucial because they are incubators of innovation and they bring together the economic and social community on the territory, on the region, um, with a strong drive towards excellence. The main idea is that, you know, isolated, we can do a lot in the vet sector, but if we just concentrate on the vet sector and are incapable of establishing partnerships with everything on a territorial level that is related to skills development, I mean, that vet in itself, you can make vet, you know, increase the quality, do everything, have the best teachers in the world, but if we are working in isolation, if we are not associated with what are strategic development objectives, with what, what is the social reality in the area where vet is uh, providing uh, uh, skills, that we will be missing the big picture. So. So we, we need to put into our research all the components and this is the holistic approach that allow us to consider all the players, all the situations, all the views. The awesome and grandi fare sistema, altrimenti saremo in difficoltà e non daremo una risposta ai nostri ragazzi e nostre ragazze.